So I said I was going to make another tutorial about classes and inheritance and prototypes, but I decided not to do it because, first of all, I don't know it well enough to explain it easily to you. And also, I never used it unless it's the time cell where I'm actually practicing it. So when you make websites, I don't think it's actually too necessary to know, but you definitely should learn. You can just look at YouTube. So what we're going to do today is at home. So text editors that is probably my favorite for small uh, things because just first of all, it just looks better than any other text editor or IDE in my opinion because first of all, it's like made with HTML and Electron and that's the downside to a lot of stuff but I just like how it looks and so there's a huge amount of customization. So let's get started. What we're going to look at, look at is Minimap. Minimap is basically just a minimap. So I can just demonstrate it by going here. So basically there's a mini map here that allows you to show your, see your code. And this is like really useful for a very long piece of code with like hundreds of lines. And then you can just see it. Yeah, that's basically mini map. Uh, go to install here, click search for mini map, and you can just get mini map. And another one is min that's kind of like the find and replace. So it's kind of like the similar it's like a part of the minimap, but it's not installed by default. So basically, now if you just like, like for example, uh, console, if I just search that, you can see there's a blue highlight on the minimap. So that's how the minimap is useful. Okay, so the next extension we're going to look at is Atom Live Server. So when you search this, it should be the first that pops up. And click when you click install, what it does is basically when you can press Command Shift P to open the command palette and search live, and just press any of them start three hundred, and this will create a localhost server that updates your HTML code automatically when you say. It. So, for example, if I say P, and then I don't know hello, because I say hello a lot. And okay, if you save, you notice it automatically reloads and it says hello here. And also, so yeah, if you say, if you just change to hello world, you save it, it reloads, and you don't need to, um, you don't need to like reload the website, it just does it automatically. Another benefit is that sometimes you will need a server instead of um, just opening the HTML file because you need to run some of the scripts. So yeah, at dot at home live server is definitely a very good extension. So next up we have script. And what script does is when you install it, it allows you to run a lot of different code in a lot of different languages without running it somewhere else. So for example, this is a code we made in my previous tutorial and when you press command I or I think if you search script run, it will show something. So for JavaScript it does this. And for HTML it actually launches a website and launches it in your browser and for Python it also just runs the code. And it's like really useful when you don't you like run it on a separate place on the terminal or the browser. And yeah, script is just simple and just a, all of the packages have a lot of different like customization stuff where you can like probably you can like look at it. But yeah, that's basically it and it allows you to run code much easier. One more very useful extension that I want to show you and that would be terminal tab. Uh, if I can type terminal tab, search the first one when you install it. So when you do, what it does is when you press, you can go to the command pad and then use terminal open. And so what you can do everything that we want on the terminal. So let's say we want to do uh, ls. It lists this in the files. If you want to do git, it does stuff and. No, steam locomotive, because why not? So yeah, it does everything that you want in the terminal and basically it's just useful for when you don't, you, you don't want to use like the git thing or the UI and you just want to do stuff with the terminal. So yeah, you don't have to launch a separate application. You don't need to like do this. So yeah, but yeah, it's helpful. I think it's like really useful. And now we move to themes. And themes are pretty simple, like there's a UI theme and the syntax theme or color scheme, whatever you call it. And there's one dark and one light, which is the ones that come default. 
And I think these are probably the best looking ones. There's the Atom Dark, which in my opinion looks terrible. And yeah, you can also syntax things. So for example, there's Nord Atom, which makes the colors like this. And another one I really like are the Solarize things. But I just don't really like how it's like it makes everything too like green with cyan. Um, I think the atom like when dark themes are probably the best looking in my opinion. But if you want other themes, you can go to install and click themes, and there's tons of them. So I don't know. I think I should do the search. Whatever, uh, it's not updating. Um, yeah, but whatever. Let's just install a random theme. And. Now it will appear here and actually it's terminal. Okay. I don't know how this looks. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty bad, but you can see how you can like install themes and change them and yeah, it's pretty cool and you can like really customize it. Uninstall. Alright. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the next uh, very useful thing is the style sheet and the init.coffee. So basically you click the open config folder and it has a lot of uh, customized customization stuff. So the style sheet, I have a bunch of stuff. Okay, so first of all, let's go the um, text editor. So basically this is the font, font settings I have. And the first thing I have is the indent guides. So this is basically CSS, but it's less. So um, it's another type of CSS kind of. So yeah, basically it has some features, but basically you can do everything you want CSS. So indent guides are these things. And so I can change the color of them. And I selected every uh, inch child, which is a selector in CSS, that uh, basically like every how many things. So like every six uh, element and then color red. So what it does is when you look at here, it, you can get colorful indents. And so you have red ones, orange ones, uh, green ones. And I made it fit with the syntax. So yeah, I think that like looks really good. If we uncomment that, it just has these like boring gray ones. So that's the first thing I have. Um, I'm probably gonna link this somewhere, but so you can copy it. But yeah, and next is this huge chunk of selectors. Basically, it's making some of the stuff italics like this so to make it more legible. Um, the next one is lines and I'm not sure what that, that does but yeah I think I just made the uh, color line fade out a bit more and yeah. GitHub project avatar border radius 50 so before it was like a square and now it's uh, basically I made it a round. I made it a circle and reason commit list, padding, uh, border radius. So yeah, these uh, padding and border radius things are basically what I did to make um, rounded corners. So here you can have, you can see that there's these like, rounded, really nice rounded corners. And I think that fits with stuff pretty well. Yep. And I just like the look of them. Yeah, so for reference, if I, um, so I don't care this I can comment it out. It looks like that. And that doesn't look I mean it looks fine, but I I think this just looks better. And another one is list item overflow ellipsis, overflow hidden. So basically if I don't do that, it kind of Yeah. And now it just makes it much more like there's like if you if this isn't the correct risk it adds ellipsis and dots to everything. So yeah, I just, you can like modify everything. A vertical scroll bar, display none. Horizontal scroll bar, display none. So I disable like all the scroll bars because they're pretty useless with a mouse. And I also have a mini Mac here. Um, here is uh, my code for the mini Mac stuff. So I set it to absolute and basically there's a setting. And so what it does is that you can see the code under the minimap, so it gives you a bit more space. But the problem is before, like originally, when you select something, it just doesn't, you know, like it doesn't let you select it. And now you can like, I set the pointer to zero by default, 
uh, somewhere uh, where is it? Yeah, it says the pointer events to none. So you can click under it. But how will you click to like go places with the square bar? You can hover on this part and it blurs everything out and makes it more opaque. And so you can drag. So yeah, I feel like it took an admittedly very long time to do this because I was tweaking the values for like at least an hour and but anyway, so left is this code and it works pretty well. Yeah, it looks really good. And then I have terminal and these stuff are just a bit uh, some like things. So for example, now these before they appear instantly, I added a bit of transition to the arrows so they have this like fade in fade out effect. And yeah, there's some um, a bit of other stuff and not much notifications that made the border border radius a bit different. And so you can like really see you can like, customize it a lot. And it's basically just CSS. So what you can do is you can open the inspector like you can with any um ordinary web browser. So yeah, you can see it's basically this uh at home is just Google Chrome, but not Google Chrome. Basically it's just Google Chrome and you can just use the uh, thing to select elements and you can see a styles class line ending tile inline box whatever and so you can style that with CSS. So yeah the style sheet is really cool. Um this is a init.coffee script and coffee script I believe is just kind of like JavaScript but it has a bunch of um, other stuff that makes it pretty useful. Um, Basically, if you type any JavaScript, I think it should work here. And yeah, it just runs JavaScript anytime you open a new window. And I haven't really used it because I'm not really familiar with like the Atom API to like use it. And I don't see too much that I can use for it. But this is probably pretty useful. Um, yeah, so you can really see like how customizable Atom is because it's basically just Chrome with like. And this is like a website essentially, but on your computer. So that makes it like pretty, like relatively slow compared to other stuff, but other text editors like VS Code also run on Atoms. So, um, I mean, it runs on Electron, but yeah, Slash.